Welcome into the Cowboys Report. If you are stuck at home, we got you guys covered on all the Cowboys videos you could ever want. We are posting daily Cowboys videos, and they are all for free. So if you're looking for a little bit of a distraction right now, we got you guys covered. Hit that big red button and subscribe to the Cowboys Report right now. Coming up today, we have a look at some possible free agency targets for the Dallas Cowboys. A quick shout out to Kashiyama, the smart tailor, for hooking me up with this awesome custom fitted suit. We'll tell you more about them in a little bit. But let's dive into some of those possible targets, including Clay Matthews, who had been recently cut by the Rams that came during the start of NFL free agency. Now, Matthews is older, but he does know McCarthy. And I know that he played outside linebacker for the Rams, and that was his designated position. But he's a pass rusher still, even though he did play some inside linebacker for Green Bay when things were pretty rough at that spot under McCarthy. He would be a pass rusher for the Dallas Cowboys. I am not bringing him in to play linebacker. I am bringing him in to rush the passer, a role that he can still do. Is he going to be prime Clay Matthews? No, he's not going to be. But if I can get him in as cheap veteran depth, because of the uncertainty around, say, Randy Gregory, Tyrone Crawford, and really the entire edge rushing group beyond Demarcus Lawrence. Yeah, I have interest in, in that if I'm the Dallas Cowboys. Next up, another edge rusher. That's Marcus Golden, who also played that outside linebacker role for the New York Giants. He's coming off of a really good year. And that's actually why I'm surprised he hasn't found a new NFL team yet. Now, make no mistake, the inconsistency that you can see right here is a bit of a red flag. Like 10 sacks this past year, 2.5, 0, 12.5. That's all over the map, even though he was injured in 2017. I wouldn't anticipate getting a 10 sack guy, but if I can get a six or seven sack player, well, that's got value to me, especially in light of where things sit right now for the Cowboys on the defensive line. You have Demarcus Lawrence. I'm starting to think more and more they choose to bring back Tyrone Crawford. Maybe Randy Gregory fills that role. And if they are convinced and committed to Crawford being the guy, well, maybe it starts to make a little bit more sense as to why the Cowboys haven't really pursued a potential edge rusher after they lost Robert Quinn. But I do think that Golden and Matthews make sense as potential buy low options who are veterans who can come in and help you. Now, they are certainly not the biggest names out there when it comes to the edge rusher group. That's Everson Griffin and that's Jadevian Clowney. As I've said before, don't get your hopes up. I wish that was the case for the Cowboys, but I don't think they're going to spend the type of money that Grifferson and Clowney are going to cost. In the end, I think they're likely going to be too expensive. Or, or Clowney and Griffin, if I misspoke something. Um, I just think they're going to cost too much, at least for what the Cowboys want to spend. Would I pursue them? Of course I would. Are the Cowboys going to? Mm, don't think that's the path they're going to end up taking. Well, I'm sorry on that one. But there are some other editors that I at least wanted to make knowledge or make note of. Excuse me. Cameron Wake is one of them. Jabal Sheer kind of intrigues me. Ziggy Ansah's old and always hurt. You could bring back Cowboys legend Benson Mayoa if you wanted to. And there's also Vinny Curry in there. But if they want to stick with Crawford. Maybe they just had an early mid-ish round pick at the position instead. So who do you guys want the Cowboys sign? Not just at edge, but across all of the free agents still out there. I'm sure Clowney and Griffin will be a popular answer. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section. I'm going to make this the pinned comment of the video. That way, if you get hit with an ad break here, all you guys have to do is scroll on down and reply right there. Moving on now to defensive tackle. I wanted to make note of a couple of guys here. With Dontari Post set to come in, Damon Harrison doesn't really make a whole lot of sense anymore. A, he's going to want more money. I think the Cowboys are going to pay a backup defensive tackle because clearly they've made Poe the other starter across from Gerald McCoy. So I love snacks, but my hopes are no longer up whatsoever. Some other DTs, and it might make a little bit more sense. I think Derek Wolf and Shelby Harris, the pair of Denver Broncos, are going to price themselves out of the Cowboys price tag range. Marcel Darius was good a long time ago. It was pretty bad recently. Timmy Jernigan, I don't think he's back in Philadelphia. And then the name to really watch out for is Mike Daniels because of his ties 
to Mike McCarthy. The Cowboys could use one more guy like Daniels. And most importantly, I think he'd actually end up being pretty cheap. Speaking of cheap, the Kashiyama suits, the quality's fantastic, but the price tag's a lot lower than you might expect. You can book an appointment right now by emailing Dallas at Kashiyama 1927.com. That is Dallas at Kashiyama 1927.com. Don't worry, I'll put that email in the comments and the description for you guys. These suits start at just 300 bucks. They just launched their brand new modern tailor line. They are built for the 21st century. Even though I'm sitting down here in my home office, it's not getting wrinkly at all. It's got wrinkle resistant fabrics. They start for the normal price of a high-end suit, but it's only 300 bucks. It's a fantastic deal. So go check them out. Dallas at Kashiyama, 1927.com. I'm doing this for you, okay? I'm doing this for you guys, Dez Stans. I'm including him on this list. Now, if you want Dez, think he's still a number one receiver, you might want to skip ahead just like a, a minute or so. The Cowboys do know Dez better than any NFL team, which I think helps in light of the fact that he kind of can't get a physical right now. And I don't, know, I don't know if you saw Dez recently. He was out there very much not practicing social distancing, getting reps in on a, on a, on a, on a, on a field, which I get, but also eh, maybe not the best look. The issue for Dez is finding a role and a fit for him. The Cowboys right now, as we'll dive into with a bunch of different receivers, they're looking for a slot. That's not a role that Des Bryant has really played before in the NFL. He's not going to help you out on special teams. That role, that 3-4 receiver, if you don't help on special teams, it's kind of tricky to find an actual good spot for him. As I've said before, one-year deal, no guaranteed money. There's nothing wrong with that. So let me know in the comments. Do you guys want Des Bryant back? Type X if you want to throw up the X and bring him back in. Or type P if you're going to pass on him and look at somebody else instead. Producer Brett shaking his head no right now. Maybe producer Brett prefers Demarcus Robinson. Maybe one of you guys. Oh, Brett also shaking his head. Oh, dear. Remote producer Brett, not a fan of this list right now. Demarcus Robinson was a part-time starter in Kansas City. He didn't have a big role, and that will reduce his price tag. He put up decent numbers, but, you know, with Tyreek Hill and all those other receivers and Travis Kelsey involved, they brought in Miko Hardman, they had Sammy Watkins. There were only, only so many targets to go around. So Robinson wasn't really involved in the offense. So maybe he could be in Dallas. But the issue is, hasn't been too much of a slot guy. That's a potential issue. Now, Taylor Gabriel has played a little bit more slot in the NFL, but fun fact, despite his size and play style saying maybe he's a slot, he actually tends to line up on the outside, but I think he could fit that role. He's a veteran option, certainly not as good as the guy you're trying to replace in Randall Cobb. But we've seen good production before, 2018, back when the Bears offense was able to, you know, not be terrible. Had a really good year. Times of the Falcons and Kyle Shanahan, really good years. But at this point in his career, I believe that Gabriel is still more of a stopgap option than he is a full-fledged solution to the Cowboys' issue at slot receiver. So keep that in mind for a lot of these guys because we'll tie it all together here in a little bit. Now, I, I right now, I'm working from Studio D, my house here in Dallas. I want to know if you guys are doing the exact same thing. Are you working from home and videoing in so you still got to look good at least up top? Type Y for yes or N for no for me in the comment section if you, like me, are stuck working at home for at least the time being. The next receiver on my list might actually be my preferred path to pursue. That's Rashard Higgins, who spent time in Cleveland. And I want to make note, the Cowboys' current wide receivers coach, Adam Henry, came over from Cleveland. Now, Higgins, with this year under, uh, under Freddie Kitchens, completely fell out of favor, was not involved in the offense at all, barely played. So is that presence of Adam Henry a good thing or a bad thing? But Higgins unlike the rest of these receivers, actually has spent a significant amount of his time in the slot. Back in 2017, he was almost exclusively in the slot. And for reference here, Randall Cobb last season, 87% of his snaps came in the slot. The, the vast majority of his reps came in that area. So you are looking truly for a slot option 
Higgins, based on previous history, kind of fits that the best. And again, look, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, they can line up in the slot. That's an option. But I don't think you want to move one of them full time, at least not because they played so well last year. Like, why? Why? If it's not broken, don't try and fix it. Devin Smith, he's not a slot. Cedric Wilson can play some slot. Noah Brown can. But those guys aren't the solution. So you shouldn't be banking on them being. Some other receivers here that I want to mention as well. Paul Richardson brings some speed. It's Ronimo Allison, whatever. Teddy Ginn's fast, but he's old. Demarius Thomas hasn't been good in like two years, so I don't have much interest in that one. All those guys we mentioned, even if you bring them in, quite frankly, I still think you should pursue somebody in the NFL draft. So should the Cowboys, and how should they add a wide receiver three? Is it D for draft? Is it S for sign? I know that in general, I am against the, oh, we'll just draft somebody mindset because that overvalues them. But in this case, I'm actually I'm actually absolutely on board with it. Just draft one. It's a fantastic receiver class. You can find value, be it in round one if one of the big three falls, in round two, in round three, even on into round four. So I say yes, spend a draft pick on a wide receiver three. Now, for those of you who are subscribed, we have a seven-round Cowboys mock draft coming up for you guys soon. You can see where I found a wide receiver three in that mock draft. So if you want to see that video, hit the big red button and make sure your notifications are on all, not personalized, all notifications. That way you will not miss out. Over now to the offensive line. I want to mention one center. That's Daniel Kilgore. If you watched our Travis Frederick Placements video, he was my top free agent out there. I'm not really convinced he's much better than Joe Looney or Connor McGovern. So at that point, it doesn't really move the needle for me. But he's played a little bit of guard in the past. So that, that positional flexibility does have a little bit of value for me. I told you guys earlier about Kashiyama, the smart tailor. Here's what their modern tailor line is. These are high performance fabrics. They're a little bit more like the awesome athletic wear that you're seeing more and more and less of the stuffy cottony blend. Heck, you can even put them in your washing machine. Yeah, they are machine washable. They travel really well thanks to their wrinkle resistant fabrics and they start at just 300 bucks. So I've got that email you see on your screen in the comments in the description, but it's Dallas at Kashiyama1927.com. Let's mention this offensive lineman, one that I think many of you would be on board with bringing back. That's Ron Leary. Broncos did not pick up his option. I know that many of you probably don't watch Denver Broncos games, and that's fine. I wouldn't expect you to. But the Ron Leary that left the Cowboys is not the Ron Leary that played in Denver. And I know that pro football focus, some of you like him, some, some of you don't. But there's a disturbing trend right here. 2016, 2019, that's going in the wrong direction. 80, 72.6, 63, and 58. That's worse than Connor Williams, who you guys tend to hate. So I, if, if you want to bring in Ron Leary and let him compete at the left guard spot, especially in light of the fact that Connor McGovern is going to compete at center, I am on board with that. But you're not going to come in and let Ron Leary say, yep, Ron, you're starting left guard. There you go. Bye-bye, Connor Williams. That's a bad idea. And especially since Connor Williams is coming off of injury, I actually think it makes a lot of sense for the Cowboys. So if you bring him in on the cheap as a possible earlier starter, if Seawall is slow to recover or just to comp compete and push, I'm all for that. Guaranteeing him the starting left guard role and thinking he's going to be prime Ron Leary, not going to turn out very well for you, especially in light of his own lengthy injury history. Let's move on now to cornerback Logan Ryan, who we've mentioned before on the show. Ryan's raw statistical numbers are really good. The stats you see in the stat sheet that are publicly available on NFL.com and all those other, all the tackles in the world, tackles for loss and sacks, interceptions. Wow, he's a playmaker. Look, look at all those plays. But then you dive in a little bit more in depth and you can use, for example, pro football focuses coverage stats. And uh -huh. not great. Uh, he was the most targeted corner in the NFL last year. Now, part of that's what they didn't want to throw at Malcolm Butler. I get that. But Logan Ryan's best role is as, as, as a nickel corner. And the issue for me is, what well, I got those guys. I got Jordan Lewis who can play that role. I got Anthony Brown who can play that role. I don't see Logan Ryan, who reportedly wanted $10 million per year, coming in and suddenly being CB1. 
So at that point, I don't really see the value in paying big money for another number two or high-end nickel corner. I ain't a number one. I don't think Logan Ryan is that guy. Now, of course, I'll make this general caveat. If he signs for like one year, two million, sign me up. I just don't think he's going to settle for that price tag. Another corner I want to make note of, Aqib Talib, who a couple years ago was a number one corner. But he's also already 34 years old. And yeah, I know he's from the Dallas area, expressed interest in the past. Does he really solve your issues? If you miss on a corner in the draft, maybe Talib is someone you revisit after that. Next corner, Prince Amukamar. He was cut by the Bears earlier this offseason, so he's not going to impact the comp pick formula. Former first-round pick by the Giants. The Cowboys know him pretty well. But again, this is the same issue that I keep running into with all of these free agent corners now that Chris Harris and Byron Jones are off the market. They're all number twos or number threes. Like, Amu Kamara is a fine corner. He can start for you, but I got those guys. I got Owuzie, who I think the Cowboys are banking on having a breakout year. I've got other options, so that doesn't really move the needle for me. Heck, all of the guys who are still out there, Xavier Rhodes, he's washed up. He is not a number one corner. Ronald Darby can't stay healthy. Probably more of a number two anyway. Tremaine Johnson was as bad as Xavier Rhodes was the past two years. Bashad Breland's more of a number two. Brandon Carr can have turnovers everywhere but Dallas because it was a systematic scheme issue, but he's not a number one either. So for me, I would explore free agent corners if they're super, super cheap, but they don't fix my biggest issue right now, which is the need for a number one corner. These free agents, that's just not enough. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.